second kings uh, chapter 5 chapter 5 20 when gehaz the servant of elisha the man of god said my master has fed this mama the, the syrian by not accepting from him what he brought as the lord lives i will run after him and get something from him so gas pursued naman when naman saw someone running after him he got down from the chariot to meet him and said all is well and he said all is well my master has sent me to say just now two young men of the sons of the prophet have come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of clothes, Naaman said. Naaman said, please take two talents. And he urged him to accept and he tied up two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of clothes and gave them to two of his servants. And they carried them in front of Gehaz. When he came to the hill, he took them from their hand and put them in the house for safekeeping. And he sent the men away. The men away. They left. And he went in and stood before his master. Elisha asked him, where have you been? Gehaz, he said, your servant went nowhere. Elisha said to him, did my heart not go with you when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? Is it a proper time to accept money and clothing and olive charge and vineyards and sheep and oxen and male and female servants? 27. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. So Gehaz departed from his presence a leper as white as snow. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The story of uh, Gehaz was teaching me a lot. Especially when I was told about how can you be a faithful servant? Just a faithful servant. Just right, faithful servant. Faithful servant. When I was reading about this, I realized that truly there are many, many servants. Long time servants, short time servants. I mean, also unfaithful servants. I mean, all kinds of servants. And where we have read, we can see a man who was given an opportunity to take over his master. But when times goes, he began to learn one of the mistakes of his master. His master was generous. And you know, he can give to everyone and bless everyone. Girls realized that poverty was their portion. And he also realized that there was opportunity to be blessed. Because it was not the first time this man was not accepting anything from anybody. But this is a record that Elisha was not ready for anything from someone, but rather do the will of God. If you read here, you realize that the Bible says, yes, you know, he realized this, the master did a mistake. There was opportunity here to be rich here. What he did was, okay, 
as we have read, the Bible said, he went on the other side. Can I tell you this? One of our challenges today is we don't know how to be a servant. More so, how can we be faithful servants? That is one of our challenges today. We don't know how to be what? Servant. So how can we be faithful servants? When I read here, I realize that this man caused his generation to and suffer. And it's not that he was not given an opportunity to be a servant. He had for him to take his generation to a level of the prophets. He looked at the condition. He looked what he, he will receive or benefit. And he lost his assignment. What makes us to be unfaithful servants? It is to be mistaken on understanding that it's not all that we have <laughs> that matters. But where God is taking us, what matters. Tell it's not all that you have that matters. But where God is taking you, that's what matters. If we go back to this man again, you realize that the Bible says he departs from the servant of God. Now, meaning that he never got healing, the generation also suffered. But before that, he was given an opportunity. Everybody will be given an opportunity. The opportunity was given was he was asked. Where were you? No, like that question was very, very important. This man was asked by a prophet. And this prophet, you know, he saw him doing many, many things in front of him. He said, where were you? And the man says, I, I didn't go anywhere. And the man says, I didn't go anywhere. This is what is happening today. That we become unfaithful and promoted to be liars. Because one sin brings another. I don't know if you're hearing that. Tell your neighbor, say, my friend, if you sin one sin, you'll be promoted to another. This man had opportunity to say, let me confess the man of God. But he had opportunity to carry on sin. And that sin opened doors to leprosy. The reason why we are unfaithful today, it seems as if we don't know the God we are saving. Because I want to tell you the reason why you people are not faithful. When you are a faithful servant, it means you are appointed by someone. It means you are appointed by someone. You don't become faithful when you do your will. You become faithful when you do the will of the one who appointed you. Gehaz did his will. That's why when he was asked, that's why he was found himself wrongly lying in someone's will. That was the blessing of Elisha. He rejected. But this man came and lied to take it. Let me say this to you. You are appointed. Tell you are appointed to 
do what is right. So the one who appointed you is the one that will say you are faithful. I don't know if you are hearing that. Listen, when you are painted, you are given an assignment. And in that assignment, you will be checked if you are doing it right. Can I give you some example? If I send you to go and buy bread, you steal a change. And when I look at it, do you think I can trust you again to go and buy bread? That's what is happening in Christianity. We have been given assignments to go to better responsibility. Because it's only assignment that takes you to another level. Another level of responsibility. I don't know if you're hearing it. Tell your neighbor, my friends, it's only your obedience on the assignment you've been given. When you are faithful, you'll be given another responsibility. If you read John 14, verse 28 to 31, you can see there, let's go there, we read. You heard me tell you I'm going away. It's verse 28. I am coming back to you. If you really love me, you will have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. 29, I have told you now before it happens so that when it does take place, you may believe and have what? Faith. 30, I will not speak with you much longer. For the ruler of the world, Satan, is coming and has no claim on me. 31. But so that the world may know without any doubt that I have loved the Father, I do exactly as the Father has commanded me or act in full agreement with him. And from there he says, get up, let us go from here. That was Jesus telling the disciples. I will just tell you what Jesus was saying here. Here you can see Jesus showing that there is nothing he wanted to gain in the world. Because our, our unfaithfulness starts there. He said, okay, I have done the will and I finish now I'm going to my father now I'm telling you now I finish what I was here for but Satan will come but he have got nothing to do with me Jesus here embarrassed the world he says okay let me just read that verse maybe you'll understand maybe verse 29 maybe you'll understand I want to show you there. Because I don't want to talk outside of scripture. I have told you <inaudible> now before it happens so that when it does take place, <inaudible> you may believe. Okay, 30, I will not speak with you much longer. <inaudible> for the rule of the world, Satan is coming. <inaudible> and he has no claim on me. <inaudible> but so that the world may know without doubt that I have loved the Father, I do exactly what the Father wanted me to do. What Jesus was saying here was saying, okay, for me to go to the cross does not need anybody. It's what my Father wanted me to do. I've got many things to say, but because the time of Saturn has come. I cannot claim to anybody to prove that I'm the Messiah. That's why Jesus was saying. Jesus went to a point of showing that though he had opportunity to prove, but he didn't want to show. And he said, Saturn could not find anything in him. Because there's nothing that Jesus did 
in an unfaithful way. If, if we try to check and scan you, you can find Satan try to find something about you. Jesus said, you know what, I'm going to my father, yes, I do my father's will. And to show that I've loved my father, I do whatever he say. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask somebody say, my friend, do you know that your love walk is being checked all the time? If you're a Christian, God is looking at you. Your assignment in life is being checked if you are faithful doing it. This is not the time of proving. This is not the time of showing off. I don't know if you are hearing me. Jesus had many things to say. He said, Satan have got no claim with me. I have done my father. I have done my work. I finished. Even when I go to the cross, is to honor my father. Is to do what I say, but there's nothing that I need in this place. When I say embarrass the world, he, there was nothing he proved he wanted. If, if Jesus was rich, he could call people and say, come and take this. I'm going to the cross. This is useless. Can I tell you this? Many things we are getting in an unfaithful way affect us in our hearing. We tend to do things that we are not supposed to do to prove that we are hearing. I don't know if you're hearing me. Do you know that many of us today we are act like we are seeing God is here. But we are also proving that we are hearing God. And as we are in a faithful thing, God never told us to do what we are doing. Listen, if you don't do, if you don't do what God wants you to do. You are unfaithful servant. If you don't do what God is telling you to do, you are just unfaithful servant. Because if you do things to please people, it's your benefit. Tell them if you do things to please people, it's for your benefit. God wants us to remain faithful servants. I don't know if you are hearing me. For God to send you and send you tomorrow and send you another day is when you were checked if you're faithful. You'll be given a better responsibility. I think this is the time that you don't need to cry to be like anybody or try to compete anybody. You try to be yourself obeying what God is telling you because he has appointed you to be what you are supposed to be. And for you to be what God wants you to be, carry on with with what God God is telling you to do. And if you are faithful there, you will reach your destiny. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you read John 17, 1-5, to Jesus emptied himself by seeking the fulfillment of the command of the Father. And then he wanted to do or to get what he has been given about. Jesus knew that this fame, this fame, everybody was talking about it. But when the cross came, the Bible said he endured the shame because of the glory that was said before. I don't know if you're hearing that. If we are Christians, 
you can still face the shame because, because it is on your way. But it's temporary because you're suffering of the present time. What we compare with the glory that will be revealing But if your focus is your surroundings, you will try to win surroundings and lose your destiny. I don't know if you're hearing me. There are Christians that are hearing me now. I want to give you a way. Your destiny is assured. And nobody will be able to stop you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. The same Jesus, when Spirit was speaking through the life of Paul in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, is when he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You see, Christ went that way. He just went a way of faith. He became a servant. He did things that, you know, living the heavenly glory and accept to go through the life of Galilee. Just to prove that his God is God. By obeying what God is saying. The scripture says, imitate me as I imitate Christ in faithfulness in how I walk in the Lord. Test somebody and say, whom are you imitating? Whom are you imitating? In Luke 16, 10 to 11, it shows that uh, when you are faithful in small, you'll be faithful in big. You know, that scripture shows that faithfulness is check on what you have been given. I mean, you don't need to be faithful on other people's things. On what you have been given. It's checked. Faithfulness is checked on what you've been given. For you to go on the other level, you are checked on what you are given. If you are given five rand, how far are you faithful with five rand? If I have a church of 20 people, I will check my faithfulness of that. God won't wait for me when I have millions people. Sometimes I look at the people of business and I found that when they are failing to be faithful when they've got too much money. And I realized that they didn't know that they were supposed to be faithful in the small things. One of the reasons why God allowed them to be small. From higher level to come down. Is when he wants to teach them faithfulness. Can I tell you this? You are falling. It's not falling when you are Christian. It's to teach you to be faithful. Many people were very, very blessed. The reason why they are not faithful there, they have money there, and later they fall, they become zero. When they have got zero there, you say they have fallen. No, God is speaking with them. I'm teaching you how to be faithful. Because if you fail there, you are dangerous to yourself and others. So now, you have to be lower to learn to be small here. But unfortunately, many people who are there, they don't want to come here. They carry on with unfaithfulness, dubious ways of doing things. So that people will esteem them there. It's very dangerous to have faith. It's very dangerous. To be known is very dangerous. I don't know if you're hearing me. You know, one day I was like working with Mama. And I realized that everybody's life is knowing me. And I want to live a life where everybody will know Jesus. But you find that people will be like knowing me. So one day I said a statement. I said, Now because people know me, 
I can't make mistakes. I'm sure you understand that. There's a strict way of living. You need to maintain it when you are down here. When you are down here, God is teaching you that you know, when you reach there, you must not struggle. Many people are struggling on top there because down here they never learn a lesson. I don't know if you are hearing me. The reason why we have got unfaithful people today things happen fast to them before they learn lessons they are way on top there. And no one can correct them today. A lot of you are hearing me. That's why I say my friend. You need someone to correct you check your ways because God is looking in your ways be a faithful servant listen you can be on top there and you find the world is knowing you but you find you are living a miserable life you know when God teaches you to be faithful when you are down here even when you are up there your character will change your life will change nothing will come to affect your life negatively even your prayer life won't change you know why many people here stop praying it's because money has come once what you are crying for you receive it. You have got nothing to pray about. But we need Christians who are in a constant walking with God. Whether you are blessed or not, that delay is saving a purpose. The grace of God is working for you. So that when you reach there, no one will be able to stop you. God doesn't want you to reach a level and you fall down. No more falling and rising. If you are listening to me, no more falling and rising. You will go higher and higher. I say you will go higher and higher. Just remain, just remain faithful. Just be a servant. I don't know if you are hearing me. Okay, let me show you another scripture. In Matthew 25, 21 to 23. Let's read there. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful, what? Servant. Servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. 22. Amen. Also the one who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things share in the joy of your master. Mm. I don't want to read about 24 of this one. I don't want to read about it. But if you can read those two there, you will realize that there's always promotion <laughs> when you are a faithful servant. You know, it can take long, but it will be God's time. I don't know if you're hearing me. You see, if you can see the, the master who gave them responsibility when he comes, he'll be checking what they have done. I don't know if you're hearing me. You know, I felt it's better I become faithful teaching what is written in the Bible than teaching what I've read about someone. Because when I read about Jesus, I found that he was teaching things that the Pharisees never taught. This is the time now that you can tell yourself, are you hearing me? That now, what God has given me, I must never do something wrong to give me the grace, I think, is the grace. To bring a praise for my name. I'm not saying don't bath in the morning. Or don't do makeup. But the question is, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? 
So if you read there, you <laughs> realize that <laughs> you have been given and entrusted with something. You have to be profitable <laughs> with what you have been given. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell me, you have been given something. Be profitable with what you have been given. I wish, uh, if you are listening to me, you can stop imitating yourself to others or copy yourself by others. You begin to do like this, you accept yourself. I'm born in a poor family. But I want to be a real Christian. Because when God is looking, his eyes are the faithful. God is not looking who's having a lot of money, who's having a big name. I mean, I mean, I mean which year you were born. His eyes are the faithful. There's something that you are entrusted with. If you are entrusted with the hands to <laughs> clean the church, <laughs> do it. If you are entrusted with mouth to <laughs> pray <laughs> and intercede, do it faithfully. Don't do it because you want to benefit. Don't do it because you want to be known. The Lord is the one that will advertise you. If you are hearing me now, I want to speak this word to you on what you were faithful on. I want the Lord to advertise you. I say, I want the Lord to advertise you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Listen, be faithful with what God has given you. Be yourself. Accept your wrongs and come to right. It's going to be painful to find when you die one day, God said, you never live on earth. Because what you were doing, you were living the life of others. Remain faithful. It will work for you. Remain faithful. It will work for you. Let me show you the last scripture. If we read Proverbs 28, 20, DM 28:20. The faithful people or the right-minded people will be abound with blessings. But he who hurries to be rich will not go unpunished. You know, today I'm learning that sometimes when you meet people, they weary you is good. Sometimes there's a delay somewhere is good. It's to make you not to rush to get the blessing. I was asking myself that out of the experience I got when I'm working the Lord, what if I became rich very fast? You know what I will do? I will insult people. Because I won't know whose people. If I just become rich, so big, and then I reach the level where I am now, if I didn't go all the channels, trials, persecution, when people do whatever, I will respond. And I forget that I'm on my assignments. Because, you know, you know what English say, what worries them when the drug bugs? When, when you're a Christian who's faithful, you could still hear the talking aside. But it won't take your focus. When you're 
When you are faithful, you How hold your focus. You carry on your focus. Because your faithfulness demands your focus. Your focus brings your destiny. I don't know if you are hearing me. And your destiny brings fulfillment in your heart. You can be fulfilled before you receive something. There are some people who have got peace not because they got millions. They have got peace that surpassing all understanding. You won't understand why they have peace but it's because God is reigning in their heart. I don't know if you are hearing that. Ask your neighbor say my friend. Are you aware that you can buy peace? Are you aware that you can buy peace? If you read, you realize that if you are focusing and there are trials around you, those trials sometimes you won't even hear them. You will just hear people say, we heard, we heard about, we heard about, we heard about, we heard about. But yourself, you run like Paul. You forget what is behind and press on to the crown that is ahead. There are some Christians here today who are listening to me. I'm hearing that God is taking them to their destiny. And this is your time you have been waiting for. I don't know if you are hearing me. Because you are here asking yourself why I went all through this. It was a lesson for someone. When you stand up and say God has done it, you'll be speaking faithfully because you will be rewarded faithful also. I see God rewarding you faithfully. I see God rewarding your faithfulness. How many of you know that they are faithful today? I'm here to tell you that God is rewarding your faithfulness. Listen. Unfaithful people, they are there to dilute the faithful. Many times, you see that the remnant that is faithful is so small. If we can try to check the people, always those who will be faithful are the ones who are left aside. When you are being challenged on what you are facing is to check the faithfulness in you. You can hold on because God is having a purpose with your life. I can see some people here holding on until this time. Can I prophesy you? From now on, there's a door that has been opened in front of you. And no one will be able to close it. I said there's a door of business. Door of success. Door of prosperity. It's in front of you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Listen. Getting things in a rush way. You can be punished. You can be punished. I know some young ladies who are so beautiful. They just find loving a man who's having a car, not knowing how much he is. I mean, I'm just giving you examples so that you must learn. Some of you, you want things you have never worked for. You, you see a man, I mean, I mean, you see a man, I mean, you see a man, I mean, you see a man, I mean, you see a I mean, here is clean. I mean, he cut everything here. And he's driving four by four and, and he's stopped there. Four by four you are working with your heels. But you can see this person is your father. This person is your father. And now you are fighting the mother. And the mother, because that person who is the house there is equal to the age of your mom. But because you want to be rich, you can't descend. 
You don't even understand. Your focus is money. And that money is coming with HIV. HIV. That's why today we have got problems that, is that why cannot be solved. I don't know if you are hearing me. Because of the people who want to be rich very fast. I love the clap you are receiving. I, I love the opposition you are receiving. It's killing you but it's teaching you something. When God is delaying you, God is teaching you something. It's a great lesson for you. When God is delaying you, it's a great lesson for you. It's a great lesson for you. You are going to your destiny. Thank God you have been delayed until now. But when you live here by your faithfulness, you will reach your destiny and nobody will be able to stop it. If you believe, shout hallelujah.